Death is coming for us all. Look, there's some right now. I see you. You won't get me today, you bony fingered bastard. Who will give lists to the children? Who? Adam Cleary? Ha! They'd rather have tetanus. Anyway, death is a common storytelling device. It wraps things up, creates emotional moments, and in the right hands, can be creatively violent. Almost just as common is the theatrical of bringing people back to life, and films exploit this to no end in order to keep with sequels or keep people hooked in general. However, some of the ways in which movies have brought their characters back to life have sucked harder than insert sexualized Jules joke here. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and these are seven outrageous ways that famous movie characters came back from the dead. Have you ever thought to yourself, boy howdy, I wish I was a 3,000 ton mech suit of armor that could just crush through buildings like paper cups? Oh, you have? Oh, well, aside from the massive amount of therapy bills you probably pay each month, you'd probably like to hear about this week's list sponsor, War Robots. War Robots is a highly competitive 6 vs 6 mech shooter which focuses on tactics as much as it does unleashing all manner of insane weaponry. The best thing about this is that you can choose and customize your robot in any way that you see fit, meaning that you can lead your team to victory in so many different ways. The graphics look awesome and the game is constantly getting new content added to it. Myself and the gamer lads are on there joining the 75 million players who are already using this. If you install War Robots now, you'll get a huge starter pack of a GI pattern robot and a unique skin for it, and four Punisher machine guns, and 100 gold, and 400,000 silver. So do yourself a favor and give it a try. Anyway, enough from me, let's get on with me again, but in list form. Number seven, Professor X survives being disintegrated. X-Men days of future past. In X-Men The Last Stand, when Professor Xavier tries to keep Jean Grey under control, she disintegrates him completely, leaving the rest of the X-Men without his guidance and reassuring boldness forever. Seriously, rubbing my head for good luck is actually a thing in the office, so I can attest to that. Remarkably, though, Stuart returned to play Xavier in Days of Future Past, but never bothers to explain how. In The Last Stand, it was hinted at that his psyche survived his body's destruction and that he could take over the consciousness of a brain-dead body, and according to the writers, he handily had a comatose twin brother and just simply transferred his mind to him before dying, but that just sounds like some daytime TV bullshit, doesn't it? We could have swallowed it if the film had explained it, but neither of them did. Number 6. Whistler survives a bullet to the head. Blade 2. Chris Christopherson's wise Whistler is ambushed by a gang of vampires in his hideout, and despite putting up a good fight, he gets almost beaten to death, fed on, and left to die. Cheery. Blade finds him and honors his last wish, giving him a gun so he can finish himself, and as he walks away, a gunshot rings out. But the vampires must have had a really big bone to pick with Whistler, as Blade 2 reveals that they retrieved his body, brought him back to life as a vampire, keeping him alive to feed on and to torture, until Blade rescues him at the start of the movie, gives Whistler a cure, and after a good night's sleep, he's back to normal. Then what the f did he shoot at then? Clearly not his brain, otherwise he wouldn't have survived. Maybe it was the writers, but then he f***ing clearly missed with that as well, didn't he? Number 5. Letty survives being shot and buried. Fast and Furious 6. In 2009's Fast and Furious, Letty gets on the wrong side of some bad dudes who chase her down and cause her car to crash. She crawls out of the wreckage badly hurt and is then shot and killed by a henchman. She has a funeral and everyone is very sad. But just like Blade 2 and My Birth, if it wasn't shown on camera, then according to films, it didn't happen at all. It turns out that she wasn't shot after she crawled out of her car. The baddie actually shot the tank of the car, which caused an explosion that sent her flying into a ditch, causing plot convenient amnesia, and she was later recruited by the villain of Part 6 to be a part of his team. God, these films are so dumb. Why do I like them so much? Her memories slowly come back as Vin Diesel growls romantically at her, and she switches back to the good side, and nobody wonders whose body they actually bear. Buried. Number 4. Statham survives falling out of a helicopter. Crank high voltage. In the original Crank, Statham's character is injected with a poison that is slowly killing him, and the only way to stay alive is to keep his adrenaline pumping. He survives long enough to chase his mortal enemy onto a helicopter, which they both fall out of. After a quick call to his girlfriend, he crashes to Earth and looks pretty f***ing dead, but the sequel explains that he survived because he has an indestructible heart, which is promptly stolen by gangsters to give to their elderly leader. He's then given an electrical replacement heart, which he has to keep powered by shocking himself. 
Obviously. While it does undermine the surprisingly sweet ending of Crank, it's fun enough to forgive. Still, it doesn't explain how he didn't break every bone in his body and liquefy his organs when he hit the ground. Number 3. Spock Survives Radiation Poisoning Star Trek III – The Search for Spock In a Wrath of Khan scene that made grown men weep, Spock exposes himself to a lethal radiation to fix the ship's broken warp drive and dies with Kirk heartbreakingly looking on. A perfect, noble end, which lasted until Wrath of Khan became a big hit and producers quickly wanted to make another movie. In Star Trek III, Spock's casket lands on the life-giving Genesis planet, and he's brought back to life as a child and then quickly grows up to be the Spock of old thanks to science, and by the end, he's rescued by his crewmates. My god, this film was a cop-out. Number 2. Michael Myers Survives Decapitation – Halloween Resurrection In Halloween H2O, Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Stroud knows better than to trust that Michael Myers is dead after their showdown, so she steals the ambulance his body has been loaded into, and as she drives away, gah, gah, he comes back to life, doesn't he? What a cheeky little whippet! They start to fight, and the ambulance crashes. The helpless Michael is pinned and reaches out to his sister for help. Her response is to behead him, ending her nightmare once and for all. Well, until the aptly named Resurrection, anyway, in which it turns out that it wasn't Michael she killed, but some poor paramedic who he'd switched places with cheekily before Laurie swung her axe. Oh, movie, eh? God, what are you like? And number one, Sean Connery also survives decapitation. Highlander 2 The Quickening Christopher Lambert's immortal Scotsman was aided through his adventures by friend and mentor Sean Connery, himself an immortal, who halfway into the original movie loses his head in a battle with the main villain. The film ends with Lambert as the last remaining immortal, claiming his prize of mortality and infinite knowledge. But then Highlander 2 reveals that immortals are really aliens sent to Earth as punishment for a rebellion, and when Lambert comes under attack by an old alien enemy, he calls out for help from his old pal Ramirez, who magically returns to life. In a flashback on their home world, it's shown that when they dip their hands into some weird magic goo, they formed a bond that not even death can break. All Lambert has to do is call his name and he'll come running, until he dies again at least. Yes, I know what you're thinking, yes, it's dumb, and yes, if you call my name, I will always come and help you, because we're so f***ing tight-knit. You're welcome. Why would you look at that? You got all the way to the end of the video, and your mother said you'd amount to nothing. What are the chances? While you're here, why not watch one of our other many, possibly quite good channels, or watch another video, which will be largely in the same vein as the quality content you've just endured. Go on, then.